Hey everybody, welcome to Boston Movie Reviews. I'm going to do my first review on the movie that I watched last night. It is the 1977 Oscar Award winning Best Picture film, Annie Hall. When I was in college, I had a teacher who would allow anybody in the class to take home any of the VHS tapes she had. This was one of them. It's a love story. Normally that's not something that I'd be interested in. But the thing about Annie Hall is it doesn't follow that same typical arc where the whole point of the romantic comedy is to get the girl or to get the guy. That happens in like the first 15 minutes of this movie. You, you play very well. Oh yeah, so do you. Oh God, what a, what a dumb thing to say, right? I mean, you say it, you play well and then right away I have to say you play well. Oh, oh God, Annie. Well, oh well. <laughs> La-di-da, la-di-da, la-la, yeah. And then the entire movie is about keeping the relationship together or watching it grow and be strained. And I find that way more interesting than, hey, let's meet at the top of the Empire State Building with a dozen roses and a red. It's just boring. This is closer to real life, and it feels super personal for Woody Allen, who directs it and stars as the main uh, protagonist. Um, I would never want to belong to any club that would have someone like me for a member. As far as acting, Diane Keaton steals the entire show. She's singing, she's crying, she's showing like the entire spectrum of emotion. And it feels as real as possible because in real life, Woody Allen uh, had a relationship with Diane Keaton. It's, it's melancholy and funny at the same time. It makes you kind of sad and shows like a little bit of hopelessness for even these two people who you want to get together. How can you do it? I don't care what you say about David. He's a perfectly David. fine David. teacher. David. And what are you doing following me around for well, anyway? I'm following I you think and we've David. Call if this relationship quit. That's fine. That's fine. That's great. Well, I don't know what I did wrong. It's fast paced. The director chooses a lot of different things to make things interesting. It's not just a, um, a standard shot with three people talking because most of this movie is dialogue. He does things where uh, I had never seen it up until this point where two people are almost out of the shot walking towards a steady camera and their dialogue is as if we're standing right next to them. And they keep continuing towards the the frame of the camera until they come up level with it and now the camera becomes a panning shot to follow them down the street. You probably don't even notice it when you watch the movie the first time, but it's stuff like that that keeps you engaged. The visual stuff, the cinematography makes it more interesting to me. There are a ton of different cameos in this movie too. Um, you got Paul Simon. Excuse me. Oh. Hi, I'm, I'm Tony Lacey. Well, hi. Uh, we just wanted to stop by and say that we really enjoyed your set. That's, oh, yeah, really? Oh. I thought it was very musical. Oh, I liked nice. it a lot. You have Sigourney Weaver is apparently in this. She's on the IMDb page, and I couldn't find her in the movie. I think she's standing on front of, like, a movie theater at one point, but it's almost impossible to identify her, and she doesn't have a speaking line, so I don't... I don't know why she did it. Um, screen legend and one of my personal favorites, Beverly D'Angelo, can be seen on a TV for like five seconds. I'm a big fan of Beverly D. We will mention her every time she shows up in a film. Aren't you ashamed to pontificate like that? Jeff Goldblum. He's got a funny little quirky line. Yeah, I, I forgot my mantra. There's just a lot of, a lot of commentary on New York people. Uh, I'm very shallow and empty, and I have no ideas and... Nothing interesting to say. And I'm exactly the same way. And Hollywood. It's wonderful. I mean, you know they just eat and they watch movies all day. And he looks at everything kind of pessimistically because he's Woody Allen. What else are you going to do? Yeah, and gradually you get old and die. He actually has insight on relationships and he makes it funny and quirky and you kind of fall in love with the two characters and feel bad at the end because they're not going to they're not going to walk away into the sunset, but you know, it's a movie. Get over it. The old lady at the end of the table <clears throat> is a classic Jew hater. He breaks the fourth wall constantly, sometimes asking questions of the audience or people that are extras in the movie. Boy, sometimes I wonder where my classmates are today. I'm president of the Pincus Plumbing Company. I sell Tallises. I used to be a heroin addict. Now I'm a methadone addict. I'm into leather. He even goes as far as to switch to animation for a few minutes. We never have any fun anymore. How can you say that? Why not? You're always leaning on me to improve myself. You're just upset. You must be getting your period. I don't get a period. I'm a cartoon character. Can't I be upset once in a while? You take both sides in this relationship as it grows. There are certain things that um, 
Al V. Singer, that's Woody Allen's character's name. There's certain things that he'd do that are just like, I could never live with somebody like that. How much is this stuff? That's uh, about $2,000 an ounce. Really? And what is the kick of it? Which I never... Mm -hmm. He's torturing himself every day and he's dragging her into it. But then he, he kind of supplements her in different ways. She's not very forceful, she's not uh, aggressive into trying things that she wants to do, and he's a comedian, she's an aspiring singer, so he kind of pushes her to do those things. And some of the pushing her to do the things that she wants to do are what causes a strain on a relationship, which is... That's infinitely more interesting than the ex-boyfriend who's really mean is in the picture like an Adam Sandler villain in a romantic comedy there. It's, you know, it's a different thing. It's a little bit more adult here. Really, I happen to teach a class at Columbia called TV, Media, and Culture. So I think that my insights into Mr. McLuhan will have a great deal of validity. Oh, do you? If you've watched five action movies in a row uh, and you're looking for a comedy, I would recommend this. There aren't a lot of comedies that come out anymore that are funny. Everybody's so PC and up their own ass that they won't actually talk about something the way that people talk about it. And this feels like that for me. Thanks for watching. I can't recommend Annie Hall anymore. I would give it a 10 to 10. And as soon as we develop a scale as to how that makes any sense, I'll let you know. Thanks. Oh, Tell I, heard, I heard what you were saying. You, you know nothing of my work. You mean my whole fallacy is wrong. How you ever got to teach a course in anything is totally amazing. Boy, if life were only like this.